Good afternoon, all. I'm Jeffrey Mendelson. My talk today will be Introduction to Epic Based Memory Reclamation. Um, this is the standardly themed ACCU slide. And this is the standardly themed Bloomberg slide, which is where I work. Um, it also has my catchy little subtitle, What to Do When No Threat is Watching, which I'm sure is what prompted you all to come. So again, I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm not very much of a public speaker. I tend to get a little flustered. I do a lot better interactively. So if you have any questions or comments or concerns or, you know, I drop something, just please reach out and talk to me. Uh, now is good, too. Any questions about where I come? No, okay. Uh, my goal today is to introduce and promote epic-based algorithms. Um, this talk will be very high level, um, not a lot of details, no code, no numbers, um, but I'm hoping to get you interested in something as an alternative to other approaches to problems. Um, this is a concurrency-based algorithm, um, and I hope that's why you're here. Uh, so we will go through some terms. I'll explain the problem we're trying to address, um, which is memory reclamation, why it's hard. I say hard because if I said it was you know, not easy, I'd probably have less attendance. Um, the two main approaches we'll talk about are hazard pointers and epic-based memory reclamation. I'll give a quick qualitative comparison, um, discuss why I think this was a valuable short introduction, and then we'll be out of here. No comments so far, okay. So memory reclamation. Um, normally when you think of removing a node from a data structure, you just delete it, and that's all good. Uh, when you have a concurrence, um, when you have multiple threads accessing that data structure, some of those threads can be reading the node even though you're trying to delete it. How do you resolve that problem? Um, so the memory reclamation problem is how do I know when it's safe to delete a node. Um, we'll, we'll discuss an epic-based algorithm which tracks the threads and knows when there's no threads accessing that node of the data structure. And we'll discuss hazard pointers where you're actually tracking the memory as opposed to the threads to see when it's safe to delete that, to reclaim that object. There's another related algorithm called a quiescent state, um, which is very similar to epic-based, but it has one key difference I'm going to go through now, and then we won't talk about quiescent state again. Um, an epic-based algorithm is sort of a library solution. The data structure itself has some mechanism for tracking when there's no threads looking at that particular node. In quiescent state, you're getting that information from a higher level, from the programmer, from someone using this data structure. Um, they have some knowledge, perhaps, like, uh, I'm in a main loop. I know when all my threads are done processing for this iteration. I can therefore go through and reclaim memory. And they tell all the data structures. And that would be quiescent state as opposed to epic-based. Uh, one's epic base is a library, quiescent state is sort of higher level. So I check my notes, make sure I didn't miss anything. No, I'm good. Okay. Uh, so memory reclamation is hard. Um, multiple threads can be reading an object. I don't know when it's safe to delete an object. If I delete an object when it's not safe and some other thread tries to access that memory, that's undefined behavior. And presumably that's bad. Um, so what we're going to do is going to break the... the, the deletion step into two steps, into retiring and reclaiming. So this will probably be a little easier with a picture. Um, so in this example, I have a simple linked list, and I want to delete the green node. Um, so my retire step, I'm going to put the, I'm going to modify the data structure so that no new threads can find my green node, and any thread currently in the green node can finish its processing normally. In other words, it doesn't know about what's going on. It doesn't know this memory is about to be reclaimed. Um, so without going into how I would do that for a linked list, I have my original data structure, original uh, linked list. I want to delete the green node. So I set the blue node's next pointer to the purple node. No new threads can find the green node. The green node still has its next pointer to the purple node. Um, so any thread currently working in the green node can proceed to the purple node normally. When they've all exited, I can now reclaim my, the memory associated with my green node. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense. That's a lot of nods. The last time I did this in a dry run, there was like, no sense. We're going to end early. We're good. All right, moving on. Seriously? OK. <clears throat> uh, so hazard pointers, I don't know if you've heard of them before. They're currently making their way into the standard, hopefully in C++ 26, I believe. Um, and basically what you're doing is you're saying, I'm going to keep a list. I'm going to keep a list of all the things you can't reclaim yet. And when a thread goes to reclaim memory, it's going to say, oh, is this in the list first? This list can be global, or it can be data structure specific, depending on how 
you've set things up. Um, it actually doesn't matter too much for simple projects. Um, so what I do is when I access the data structure, I store the addresses I need to protect in this list. All the other threads can look at my list and compare things they're trying to, re to reclaim to this list. That's making sense or not so much? Okay, so good so far. Uh, so again, I, as I access the object, I put its, its address into, the, into this hazard pointer list. I, I also, as I want to retire things, I put them into a list of things I want to retire. Excuse me, I said that wrong, into things I want to reclaim. Um, and, but before I reclaim them, I check this set versus the set of things I can't reclaim. And anything which isn't in that set, I can go ahead and reclaim. Everything else has to wait. Um, so it sounds a little complicated, it's actually not. Does it, did I explain it well enough? So I can just conclude you guys are a lot smarter than the teddy bears I was giving this to originally. <laughs> okay, okay, they had lots of questions. Um, so I periodically clean the objects and I'm all good. Uh, let's move on. Uh, the epic-based memory reclamation is not about the specific memory so much as the threads accessing the data structure. Um, classically, uh, there's sort of three sets of retired objects. They used to be called limbo lists initially, not really relevant. Um, but I'm going to keep three bins of things I've retired and I'm trying to reclaim. I'm mostly going to keep what I call an epic. Um, the epic is really just telling me which one is the most recent, which one is current. Um, and I said there's three, so let's give them names. The, the, the oldest one will be waiting to reclaim. The less oldest one will be current-ish. And the most recent will be current. What does it mean to be current? When a thread comes into the data structure, it's going to mark itself as being part of the current epic, maybe just a counter. Um, and when it finishes its operation, it's going to remove itself from being part of the current epic. Again, maybe just a counter being decremented. Um, but what's going to happen is whenever there's no threads um, accessing a particular epic, we can reclaim the memory associated with it that's been put into that epic. So let me try that again. So I have threads coming into access. They, they mark themselves in current. They do whatever they're going to do. If they want to retire something, it goes into this list for future reclamation in their current epic, in whatever epic they were assigned when they came in. Um, when they're done, they're going to see if there's anyone else still in their epic. If there isn't, they're going to reclaim the memory. And if this was the uh, waiting to reclaim, they're also going to move the epic. So now I had the three bins. I'm going to relabel the bins. If I do this wrong, it'll take twice as long, so I'm going to try to do it right. So waiting to reclaim bin will become the current-ish bin. The current-ish bin will become current. And what was the current bin is now the waiting to, I must have done that backwards. I did that absolutely backwards. You're sure I did it backwards. Okay, so let's start from the other end. So the waiting to reclaim becomes the current ish. Because it's. Mm -hmm. The current ish becomes the waiting to reclaim. The current ish becomes the waiting to reclaim. The current becomes the current. That makes a lot of sense. And then that's what I said the first time, though. That's not what I said the first time? No. Anyone else agree with him? Vote? Okay, sorry. One last time. The waiting to the current ish will become the waiting to reclaim. Yes. The current will become the current ish, right? Slightly older. And what was the waiting to reclaim will now be considered current. Um, it's empty because I just re reclaimed everything. New threads can go in, um, but threads which have already started might still be in the current ish. That's why I called it current ish. Um, so it's basically two epics which may be getting more objects to retire, neither of which can be reclaimed yet. Um, and eventually the waiting to reclaim will, will not have any threads in it and we can actually reclaim the memory that's stored there. Good so far? Okay. Did I miss anything? No. Um, there are two sort of frequently referenced papers in, in this area. Um, the first is Practical Lock Freedom, uh, Keir Frazier. Uh, it's not the oldest or original paper on the topic, um, but it's the first approach that can be practically implemented on current multiprocessor systems, and it is a pretty good introduction overall. Um, the second, which is very frequently referenced for any type of concurrent memory-based reclamation is, and this is going to take me a minute, comparative performance of memory reclamation strategies for lock-free and currently readable data structures by Thomas Hart. I believe it was a master's thesis. Um, and it's a great introduction to epic-based and other memory reclamation approaches. I think you can find, like, find the, you know, uh, and, you know, uh, ooh, drop the anchor techniques and some other things in there. Everyone have whatever? Well, you guys have no questions at all. So 
why would I choose hazard pointers or an Epic-based solution? Um, people who, who may have heard of hazard pointers may have heard of them being inefficient. It's actually not true. The modern implementations of hazard pointers are very efficient. There is some slight overhead, but nothing huge, nothing for, for certain problems. Um, so for example, if you consider traversing a list, a single linked list, um, each thread would need to maintain two hazard pointers, what they're, depending on how you want to look at it, what they're currently looking at, what they're about to look at, or what they're looking at, what they're looking at, whatever. And they have to do this complicated hand over hand of managing these two hazard pointers to walk the list and, and have all the memory protected. Um, however, they're only protecting two nodes per thread. So the set, of the set of memory which is retired but not reclaimed is going to be relatively small. Um, in an epic-based solution, uh, and I'll get into more details later, there can be an unbounded amount of memory waiting to be reclaimed. Um, so depending on your application, that might be a big problem. Um, the overhead for epic-based, I, I would personally claim, is always less than that for hazard pointers, but not in a meaningful amount for a situation like this. Um, it's more the complexity of the, of the implementation and the um, amount of unbounded memory which would help you make your decision for a simple list. However, if you were tra tra traversing a balanced tree, um, you need to protect the nodes you're at and also all the nodes you were at because they may change if I have to rebalance the tree. Does that make sense? A little not so much nods in the back. Okay. Um, so if you imagine like a red, black, balanced tree, if that's familiar to people, um, there's a rotation that occurs as I delete an item. And that rotation can propagate up the tree. So if I'm trying to remove a node, I have to protect all the nodes back to the root um, to make sure I'm able to complete these operations and nothing along the way gets uh, reclaimed before, well, I still have to access it in the future. Okay. Uh, also, so the number of threads, excuse me, the number of nodes I am protecting is now more like log n, the size of the tree. And for a very large tree, that could create a very large set of hazard pointers. Uh, very large, how large are we talking? I mean, we're talking two for a length list for a tree, 16, 18, 20, I don't know how big a tree is. But each thread has the same number of nodes to protect. And now when I go to compare the things I want to reclaim to this set of things I can't reclaim, it can take more time. Um, still, the algorithm presented with the standard is, is very efficient, and I don't think that's a huge deal. But it's more of a concern when you're, when you're doing something more complex than a, a single linked list. Um, OK. So I've kind of been saying, so far, Epic-based is probably better than hazard pointers in those two examples, but they're very close. Uh, one place where <coughs> excuse me, Epic-based algorithms really fail you is when you have a lot more threads than cores accessing your data structure. And the problem here is that I can't reclaim memory until all threads have finished potentially looking at that memory. So if a thread gets swapped out frequently, the, time, the period of time I'm holding that memory gets very large. And in fact, you can imagine situations where, where it's, it's, it's actually not terribly hard to get to the situation where I have like almost an unbounded amount of memory waiting to be reclaimed, which is the chief argument against using um, epic-based algorithms for memory reclamation. In other situations, it may be fine. Um, another pro for epic-based uh, methods is the ease of implementation. For hazard pointers, for going through a linked list, and I, I sort of said the words, but I didn't really give you any details. It's sort of this hand-over-hand -hand algorithm, which is very detail-oriented, and you need to be familiar with. If you're not familiar with it, you're naive, naive, talking too fast. Naively try to uh, use hazard pointers in a linked list, you might get it wrong, um, and then your algorithm would be incorrect. Um, Epic-based, it's really the thread comes into a method, you do something, it leaves the method, you do something else to note that it left, and then the mechanism itself works throughout. I probably shouldn't hit the mic. <sighs> OK, I think uh, that's about all I had. Oh, one more slide. I think I covered everything here, unfortunately, though. Uh, so basically, I'm presenting epic-based memory reclamation as an alternative to hazard pointers. Um, hazard pointers are entering the standard and obviously should be learned about and used. Um, but it may not be a perfect fit for your application, or you may want something um, different. For memory reclamation, you have epic-based epic memory, but it also works for different scenarios. Um, I'm trying to find some hard hand-waving examples of this where I can convince you there's other things this could work for. Um, one of them is like a reader-writer lock. You can imagine a writer comes in and it says, no more readers, but it has to wait for all the current readers to finish before it can proceed. It's kind of like an epic-based algorithm. 
Um, also, personally, I've been currently working on a metrics collection, collection system where basically you know, time proceeds and there's a switch from one interval to the next. And for each interval, I want to compute you know, the last value, the minimum, and the maximum. Um, so as, it's process, as I'm getting data, I'm computing those, but then also when I switch, I want, to, I want the threads populating the data to not be slowed down by the switch, so to speak, not have to slow down for me to, to, to finalize this data and, and process it upstream. So again, that was sort of an epic-based solution. Threads come in, um, they go to a bin, the, the person collecting the metric at, at an interval switches the bins. Um, so now the threads are going here and then putting their data here. The, the thread collecting finishes processing, marks it you know, for next use, and then at the next interval can go ahead and switch them again. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I believe this was a 20 minute talk with five minute questions. I didn't get much interruptions and we only have four minutes, so I claim I did well. Okay, but I do have questions. Uh, do I have another? No, that's it, okay. Um, let's start in the back, sorry. So I remember there was something about uh, patterns uh, in the field a few years back. Do you see some of the, the techniques still patented or are they back in free? I'm not sure what you mean. We, some of these approaches have patterns? Yeah, Patent. Patent. I, I think what? Was Patent. Patent. Oh. Uh, well, have a point. Okay, I am not doing anything in this area at the moment. Um, have a point. Okay, I will trust Dietmar on this because I am this completely for, unfamiliar. This for Mechanic who holds one of the patents. Um, okay, does Maggot have the other? Maggot have the other? Okay, we, uh, to the best of my knowledge, which was just recently updated, there are no patents involved anymore. Um, please do your own search before. <laughs> have, 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 have your lawyers check. I completely trust my source, but please have your lawyers check. Um, moving forward. Um, yeah, I was kind of interested when you said uh, hazard pointers are going to be in C plus twenty six. Um, could you just expand on that slightly? I mean, how, how will they be used? I mean, yeah. um, the hazard pointer mechanism will be placed into C plus plus twenty. It'll be sort of a special pointer, and it'll manage the list of retired objects. Um, and I really should have had a slide in the details of that. I guess I apologize. An attribute, perhaps, or What's that? Would it be like an attribute? Um, no, it would be like a little object you would hold. Instead of holding a raw pointer, you would hold a hazard pointer. I think it's, and the special operations you have to use to move them forward, yeah. Um, it's very easy to find online. If, if nothing else, hazard pointers, uh, Magid Michael, M-A-G-E-D. I, I should have had a slide for that, just in sure. case. No, that's I think there was at least one or two more people. There we go. Uh, is there, has there been any proposals to put the airport? No, there's, um, no. Um, Recopy Update has had some push to moving into the standard, I believe. Um, right, and uh, Epic Base is kind of a mirror of that, so it's, it's not related, but no, I haven't seen anything. Are you hoping to bring something to the standard? Are you pushing me? I ain't writing a standard paper. Um, I think. I think the problem with the epic base with regard to the standard and why no one's really proposed it, in my opinion, um, is this is an unbounded uh, set of things that are retired but not reclaimed. Um, you have to know that your application can avoid that. Um, I, I think that's kind of the issue. Whereas hazard pointers, are, especially for simple things, are very efficient. It's very, 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 very specific to the memory it needs to maintain. And also, if you, um, there's also a uh, a concern you might have if what if a thread fails, right? It absolutely dies. Anything epic based is now really in trouble, right? Because that mem no memory ever will be reclaimed from this data structure. Whereas with hazard pointers, yeah, that one address or those two addresses, you know, might not be reclaimed. Uh, so I think there's a lot of bigger picture issues um, for memory for memory reclamation. For other things, it's, it's I think it's a very viable technique in all scenarios. For I think it's a very viable technique for. All, other things unconditionally and for memory reclamation with some conditions. Anyone else? I'm just about my limit, so if I do a little tap dance, <laughs> we'll be good. Or am I free to end uh, 16 seconds early? Yes, I'm free. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. <laughs>